Hello everybody, my name is James Minnes and I am the International Officer um, at the University of Sussex for Japan. Um, it's my job to help students from Japan come to the university and I'm really looking forward to meeting a lot of you at the excellent SIUK exhibition in March. Um, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about one of the most popular course areas for Japanese students at the University of Sussex, which is International Development Studies. And I'm going to be giving a little bit of an overview of where this is taught, some of the benefits of studying at Sussex, and then also looking at some of our alumni and the careers that it allows them to, uh, to have successfully built them. Um, just to say, we are going to be doing a specific Development Studies Week um, on March 22nd to March 26th, and we'll be sending you more information about that. This will include um, each of our five different development schools that I'll be giving an overview, I'll be having an alumni session, an Instagram live session, as well as some academic research talks and some career talks. So it should be a really helpful uh, and interactive week that you can join. So hopefully you can make that too. And that's March 22nd, 26th, and we'll be sending you some further information about that. But without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and um, we will get started with the presentation. So, um, <clears throat> This is the University of Sussex. For any of you who've already visited or seen pictures, we're really lucky to be located in a beautiful area on the southeast uh, coast of England. Um, and as many of you know, development studies is probably one of the most popular course areas for Japanese students at the University of Sussex. And when looking at development studies, there's various different uh, definitions as to uh, what development studies actually is. Um, and this is fundamental, this subject area, to the university. So it sort of reflects a lot of the things we do. And even our Vice Chancellor, Professor Adam Takao's research, is focused in this area. So as you probably know, Sussex has a, a really famous reputation in this area. Uh, so we're ranked number one in the world by the QS University uh, World Rankings. And our academics have both practical experience and research exp expertise. Um, so the Independent Institute of Development Studies, which is situated uh, at the University of Sussex, is very famous, um, IDS, otherwise known as, and many students sort of ask me about this uh, when I meet with them. Um, and um, that's an excellent sort of institution there, and it's a think tank which is ranked number one in the world uh, in the latest global go-to think tank index report. It also homes the British Library for Development Studies, so this is one of the largest um, sort of most comprehensive research collections on economics and social change in developing countries. And that's open to IDS uh, students and who take those courses. And then the IDS courses in particular are accredited as well. So um, this is the fourth consecutive year that the university has been ranked uh, top uh, for, uh, for development studies. And this really reflects the quality, the impact and the range of different international development research and courses which we offer. Now, something very unique, I think, to Sussex is the amount of schools which we have who teach postgraduate development courses. So it's not for just one particular institute or one particular school this ranking, it sweeps across courses which are in five different schools. So we have the School of Education and Social Work, we have the School of Global Studies, we have the Institute of Development Studies, we have Media Arts and Humanities, and then we have the Business School which is home to our Science Policy Research Unit, SPRU. Um, in particular, IDS and Sussex work in the sector, it shapes how governments and non um, NGOs address issues. And uh, many of our staff have won uh, various different prizes for their research and for their work. So for ranking, um, you can see this, I'm going to send out this presentation so you can have a look through in more detail, but you can see how that ranking breaks down. But a big component is upon our reputation. Uh, then there's different components of employer reputation, student to faculty ratio, citations, and then how international we are. And it's that consistently we performed well in, in each of those elements to give us that number one ranking each year. So there's a video you can watch here when I share the video out, and this is from uh, the director of uh, the Institute of Development Studies explaining a little bit about that, uh, that centre. 
And some of the topics that we cover in international development, um, one, one of the main things that we can summarise is that we normally do postgraduate courses which are thematic. So we look at themes rather than regions like some of the universities do. But you can see some of these are the, the areas that we look at. So it might be the impact of politics, it might be migration, it might be poverty, it might be gender. Uh, there's various different uh, specific areas of development which our courses focus on and prepare you for a career within. So um, to give a better idea of where it's taught, so we talked about how we have five different schools. Well, you can see this is our campus. We're a medium sized campus, so it takes about 20 minutes probably to walk across the university. So a lot more, um, a lot more walkable than some of the really large universities where it might take an hour in the UK. So you can get everywhere very easily and um, between the different schools which teach development. So you can see, these are the five different schools who teach development studies. Number one, School of Global Studies. Number two, the Institute of Development Studies. Number three, School of Education and Social Work. Four, the Business School, which is home to Science Policy Research Unit and Economics. And number five, the School of Media, Arts and Humanities. Now, probably the two biggest schools there in terms of Japanese students are the School of Global Studies and the Institute of Development Studies. Now, they offer um, a wide range of different types of development courses and they're for different types of students. So, um, in particular, if we start with the Institute of Development Studies, for example, this is a working institute and we require students to have work experience. So a little bit like an MBA, it's sort of a post experience qualification you're getting there. So we normally need students to have one year's work experience uh, for the courses and each of the different IDS courses have different types of work experience, so what it entails. And we'll come on to that in a moment. It also has a higher English requirement, so IELTS 7. Um, and for 2019, we had 18 Japanese students uh, in the Institute of Development Studies. So. Uh, School of Global Studies, that has nine postgraduate development courses. When I send you this presentation, you can click on the link so you can see by the different schools what these courses are and you can compare and contrast to decide which course is suitable for you. And this is a bit different because this is an interdisciplinary sort of traditional research school. So it's a fundamental part of the university. Um, and really here um, we have the benefit of you don't need any work experience for these courses. So some of the students come with work experience still because we offer that particular tailored degree, which the other schools might not offer. Uh, but you don't require any work experience and um, it has a little bit of a lower English requirement then. So it's got the standard English requirement, which we ask for for most Sussex courses. So an IELTS of 6.5. It's the most popular school for Japanese students. So we had almost 50 Japanese students and it's the only school to offer an undergraduate course in international development. So each of these five different schools offer different postgraduate courses, but Global Studies is the only one which offers an undergraduate course. And that can, can be combined with similar and popular courses such as international relations. But they also combine it and have areas in anthropology and also geography as well. So again, very interdisciplinary in the School of Global Studies. So if you look at number three, uh, this is probably, they only offer one course in development, but it's one of the oldest and most popular courses in uh, education and development. Uh, so a very prestigious course, and it's probably the single most popular course for Japanese students at the university. So we often have anywhere between five to 15 students from Japan every year on this course, which usually has about 40 students. So there's no work experience required again, and students can usually come from any degree background for this course. It does have a higher English requirement, so it's usually a IELTS of seven for that course. Um, but yeah, extremely popular, and I'd recommend checking it out. It's a really great school as well to, to consider. And again, the only course at the university which specialises on uh, education. So number four, uh, this is our business school. So the business school is home to two uh, departments within it which teach development courses. So we have a science policy and research unit, otherwise known as SPRU, 
um, which is a very famous science policy and innovation think tank. So it's got its really strong reputation based upon it being a think tank, but then it also has the benefit of a number one in the world ranking for development studies. And also home to development economics as well. Um, and that's been a popular courses for Japanese students in the past. We've, uh, as we'll see in future, um, we've had some really good alumni do some fantastic things from development economics, particularly in the United Nations. And uh, last year, there was five Japanese students um, studying on a variety of those courses. So in SPRU, we have sustainable development and energy and climate policy. And in development economics, we have MSc development economics. Um, then last but not least, we have a School of Media Arts and Humanities. Now this usually focuses on the sort of more media side and they offer a course which is combination between global studies and the School of Media Arts and Humanities. And this is a really unique course called Media Practice for Development and Social Change. So it's combining development theory with practical media skills. So things like uh, activism, documentaries, filmmaking, all of these type of things uh, are included within that postgraduate degree. And no work experience or uh, any particular type of degree required for that. And we had one Japanese student on that programme last year. So um, as I mentioned, all of these different courses um, we're going to be featuring in our development studies week. So we're going to have a day for each of these schools. So it's a really good opportunity to get to know more from the academics, but also the alumni. Hopefully we'll have some Japanese alumni within each of those talks who will talk about how the course helped them within their career. <clears throat> so this slide here, you can click on these links if you play it in present presentation mode and I'll take you through to the course information so you can have a look at the modules, the unique selling points and you can apply for up to three different courses. So if you're confused between which courses that you want to apply for, you can apply for more than one and I'm sure SAUK will do a fantastic job in helping uh, steer you and also help you with the application for that as well. <clears throat> so the, um, the entry requirements, uh, well, if you're doing an undergraduate course, um, we usually need um, for direct entry, we need A-levels of AAB or an international baccalaureate of around 34 points. If you're doing the Koto Gakko system, we normally need you to do a foundation year and there's specific entry requirements for that listed on our foundation year page or our International Study Centre page. Um, <clears throat> for our masters, this differs from university, um, university to university and based upon the type of uh, scale the university uses. But to generalise, it's usually around a GPA of 3.0 or grade B, which we're looking for, which is equivalent of a second class upper in the UK. Now, um, in particular, IDS then has that one year's work experience, uh, which we ask for, and a specific degree background, which they're looking for a social science of so things like development, international relations or economics are preferred then, but not necessarily if you've got the work experience, so they, uh, they take a more liberal view uh, and look at the work experience um, as the most important feature there. So you can have a look at this slide, which uh, when I slend round, and this breaks down uh, those different courses IDS offer. You can see how many students are on each of those courses, how many are from Japan, to give you an idea of a popularity, um, and the type of work experience. So to say with most of these courses, they include work experience within your degree. So if you've done any volunteering, maybe like a JICA youth programme, or maybe you've done a, a short placement, this work experience can be cumulative so it doesn't all have to be taken as a block they can add that up and that's why it's really important that you include the different elements on your cv and they can use that to decide whether it's sufficient for them one thing to say one popular course um, is globalization business and development and in that case they often take the work experience from other areas such as business law or government so it can be other types of work experience rather than just specific development experience um, and that's very popular for students from Japan who might have worked in say accounting or as a lawyer or in government and to bring that experience and then to um, bring that to the course and then the course is giving them a sort of a development theory and the practical skills then to add on top of that. 
So, um, move to the next slide. Um, a question which I often get asked about is international diversity. And we're really diverse at Sussex and particularly in the development field. So we have 50 different nationalities on development courses. Um, the most popular nationalities, uh, and this is in order of, uh, of popularity, is number one is India, two is Japan, three South Korea, four Pakistan, five USA, six Brazil and the Netherlands. So Japan is the second biggest nationality in IDS. Um, but you don't really need to worry about there being too many students from one country, because although it might be the second biggest, we have students from so many different countries, often one, two from a particular country, which make up this really diverse uh, mix of students. So you don't have to worry about having too many students from your own country in classes or the university um, because yeah the classes and the courses in development they are very diverse then. So we talked before one of the schools if we remember the School of Global Studies um, that is the largest uh, school for Japanese students and offers the most postgraduate courses. Now you'll remember this doesn't require work experience and one of the things unique to this school is they offer placements so you can do a placement within your program and this is a great way of building up work experience particularly if it's an area that's related to a, a sort of career that you want to go on to do. Now uh, when we say placements we have a placement officer and she's going to be actually giving a talk as part of development studies week so you can see some of the examples and some of the help available to students but essentially it's a little bit like applying for a job so they give you a list of the people who have um, sort of offered placements in the past, both in the UK and so many around the world. And then it's your role then to write to them to volunteer your services uh, to that NGO or company. You then undertake a placement for up to 12 weeks. And usually you're doing a project which might not be related to your dissertation. So you might be doing a different project, but then you're carrying out your research. You might be doing sort of field uh, interviews with the staff, which you then use as for research for your dissertation. So yeah, it's a great way of building up experience. Um, there's a video here, so you can click the link as well, and that will take you through and see some of the opportunities there. But that's all in the School of Global Studies. Um, if we look at, say, for example, the Institute of Development Studies, we have a wide range of different, I think up to 100 sometimes a week, of, um, of uh, guest talks from alumni, from people from NGOs, governments coming into the Institute. Uh, so it's a fantastic, really exciting place for all of this. It doesn't offer placements in itself because students are expected to come with that work experience already to build upon. So it's again a little bit different between School of Global Studies and the Institute of Development Studies. And it sort of sits more in terms of what your background is. So yeah, we have a diverse range of projects which are undertaken um, and research which is taken by our academics. And people who are conducting this world-class research are often the people who are teaching you uh, these courses as well. And um, you can check out each of the different school pages for more information on the research as well. If any of you are an undergraduate student thinking about studying at Sussex, you can see this video um, and this talks a little bit about the experience of learning in um, this very different year. So this is Shima. Uh, she's uh, originally from Tokyo, from an international school there, and she talks a little bit about her final year and how she's found the combination of um, sort of uh, online teaching this year uh, and finishing her degree. So. Hopefully that will be useful for yourself. Um, we also have a profile here of another current student. Um, so her name is Natsumi. You might have been in touch with her already as she's doing our Japanese calling at the moment. So she's calling all Japanese offer holders to give them a chance to ask any questions about the course or the university. She'll be doing this again then in... Um, probably May time as well. So if you haven't had a chance this time, you might have a chance next time. So um, yeah, the big important thing, and I think a lot of the reason why people are looking to study at Sussex is to help them with their career and get them onto a good career and job uh, within the development field. 
So this gives you some examples of uh, what our IDS and our School of Global Studies graduates have gone on to do. And you can see specific information by course uh, if you click on those links that we mentioned before. But to give some examples, so IDS graduates, we've got three students working in the United Nations Development Programme, one is a peace building specialist in Ethiopia, one is a resident rep in Fiji, and one in private sector for development office in Istanbul. Got one in ILO uh, as a social protection officer in Thailand, one in the IOM working as a project manager. Um, it says four, but I think there's actually a lot more than four students working in JICA in various different positions both in the central office in Tokyo and then out in the field. Um, we have a number of students in the Asian Development Bank. Um, and then we have people working in embassies around the world, UNICEF and UNU. So those are specific Japanese students. And just a small number of examples, we have so many different Japanese students in various other areas as well. And then if we looked at the School of Global Studies, uh, recent graduates have been working in UNHCR, uh, so in Kathmandu, in the ILO again, Centre for Refugee Solidarity, and then in JICA. Um, so in particular, you might be thinking of it yourself, but a lot of students are looking or keen for jobs in the United Nations or JICA. And one thing we would say is to do some research as to the types of jobs available, as development includes various different types of job roles. So you could be on the front line, you could be in the field, but equally you could be in the back, in the office, in the planning, in the administration, in the accounting. So when we say development, it's a catch-all term for various different careers. And so it's a good idea to have a look at the different types of jobs, work backwards then to what type of course will be good and give you the skills and the knowledge uh, to do that. But one thing we would say in in particular with IDS graduates is we want them to come out as fully qualified development practitioners, so fully qualified development consultants so they can go straight in uh, to these types of projects. And I think really all of our uh, master's courses are looking at giving you not just theoretical but practical knowledge uh, that you can use um, with the aim of getting sort of one of these top jobs then. So some examples I've got here, which you can go through, and we've got videos from them as well, um, is um, some of our alumni. So we've got a really good alumni group who meet regularly. Um, in um, happier times, I'm able to visit Tokyo and meet with these alumni. Um, and it's a great resource to use both as a professional network, but also as a fun way to remember Sussex. And these are some of our uh, cross section of different alumni and what they've gone on to do. So the first thing we have Chicago, and she studied um, MA Development Economics at the university and had a really successful career following that in the United Nations. Uh, so very impressive there. I and mean, I'd recommend watching her video. Um, secondly, uh, we have Kentaro, um, who did the International Education and Development course, and then he's had a fantastic wide-ranging career within JICA. A lot of that has been in the front line um, to do with various different issues as well. Um, really inspirational, and again, we have his course here, and he explains why he chose his course and how that's helped him with I his career. Uh, thirdly, we have Tamahi, who did a PhD within Development Studies, uh, and also one of our MPhils, which preceded the master's courses that we teach now in, uh, in IDS. Um, and again, um, she's had a great, really wide-ranging uh, career, and we have a video from Tamahi here. And then last but not least, we have Reiko, who, um, yeah, did the Globalization Business and Development course. Um, so came from sort of a more um, accounting background and now works in the central office in JICA in Tokyo as well. So it shows the different types of jobs available and also the different types of backgrounds which our students have. And again, Development Studies Week on March 22nd to 26th um, will hopefully have a number of these alumni joining and it'll be a great way of learning a bit more about, um, yeah, about how, how they got onto their careers and how the course helped them. So finally, um, the university, just to give some quick facts and overview, um, you've probably done your research already and know a lot of this already, so we're not going to spend too long on it, but just to say the university 
other than ranking, why would you look at Sussex? Well, I think really, we're really lucky to have a great location. We've got a fantastic campus. We're in a really nice, or just outside a really nice city by the seaside. And it's a really progressive um, sort of liberal university. So we're sort of famous for sort of these attributes, which maybe some of the universities don't offer. So we have 5,000 international students, 17,000 students in total. We have over 100 students from Japan, so I think that makes us the joint second most popular university for Japanese students alongside UCL. Um, but as I said, 100 is still a relatively small proportion of 5,000 international students, so you don't need to worry about there being too many Japanese students in any part of Sussex. Um, great campus, we're the only university to be located in a national park, so if you like the outdoors and walking like I do, um, it's fantastic for that as we're based in this green parkland area. And um, other course areas, we're ranked top 100 in the world for business and economics as well. So we have other strengths and other high rankings and other areas outside of development studies as well. We're also lucky we're probably the only university to have a Premier League football club on campus. So we have Brighton and Hove Albion, which is where my old office used to be as well. Um, we have a number of different famous alumni as well. So various different presidents, vice presidents and influential people, um, including someone, um, the president of Costa Rica, who actually studied in IDS a few years ago. University location is really important, I think, and we're in this secluded green campus, which is great because we have so much space. And in particular, with these times such as lockdown or COVID, we've really benefited from our location because it's a small city we're nearby. We're secluded. Uh, we're outdoors. There's lots of things you can still do very safely, um, such as exercising, visiting the beach, for example. Um, so, yeah, we have been quite fortunate as to our location during the whole of the pandemic. Um, we are located about, um, well, it's a nine minute train ride. We have a train station at the entrance of the university. It's nine minutes to the centre of Brighton. It's six minutes to um, uh, an area where a lot of students live on train. And I live, I can see the train station now if I look out my window. Um, and then it's about uh, probably 10, 15 minutes on the bus to another area where a lot of students live as well. So really um, well connected. We're less than one hour away from London. So there's multiple trains every hour to London. It's less than 30 minutes on the International Airport, Gatwick Airport. Um, so that's very convenient too. And then there's also things like cycle lanes into Brighton and the city itself is fantastic because it's a relatively small city. So we're looking about 300,000 uh, people. It's very compact, so it's very easy to walk around. We have the beach. It's famous for sort of being a tourist location. Um, we have many NGOs and charity organisations based within the city. So this links really well to development studies. There's a lot of the grassroots organisations or charities that you might be looking at actually have offices or are based within Brighton. And Brighton, as you might know, is very famous for being what we would say is hippie or progressive or liberal. So a little bit like San Francisco, for example, in that respect. So we have one of the largest LGBT um, sort of communities and uh, pride festivals in the UK, various different music festivals which go on. Um, and yeah, it's sort of got a very independent spirit as well. Um, so we have a lot of independent shops, a little bit similar to sort of areas like Koenji or Shimo Kitazawa. If you're from uh, Tokyo, it's got that vibe going about it, which makes it very popular uh, for our students. See some of the famous attractions uh, here that we have Brighton Pavilion down in the bottom, uh, the lanes, which is a famous area of different sort of independent shops. And then, of course, the pier, uh, which is one of the largest in Europe there uh, and our uh, Pebble Beach as well. So that's an overview of uh, development studies at Sussex. Um, it's quite a quick one. Uh, there's a lot of information to, to drill down into. And you can ask me any questions about that by getting in touch with me. This is my email address and also uh, my Skype. And we can arrange a one-to-one -one session, a Zoom session. Um, so that can be um, during the excellent SI UK exhibition, which we have in March. Um, but if you want to do before or afterwards as well, um, I'm certainly 
totally open to that. So please do get in touch. And yeah, hopefully I will meet and see you at the SIUK exhibition and then also on the subsequent um, development studies week as well. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you stay safe and uh, well. Bye bye.